sorry. It's a pretty standard stun, Homer. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be seeing if I can beat Cuphead with the Cursed Relic on Expert Mode with the DLC. I need help. The rules for this challenge are extremely simple. The only charm I'm allowed to use for the entire game is the Cursed Relic. If you don't know, the Cursed Relic limits your HP to 1, and it completely randomizes your shot. But it does include a bunch of the charms, such as the Heart Ring, the Smoke Dash, the Coffee Charm, the Wheat Stone. All of those are included in this charm. But like I said, every single time you stop shooting, it will switch your shot. And you always start a battle with 1 HP. And if you don't know already, pretty much every single time you beat a boss, the Cursed Relic upgrades a bit. And once you beat around 5 bosses, it upgrades to the Divine Relic, which means I can't use it anymore. So I had to make five separate save files and go through almost the entire game every single time just to get this challenge done. So if you like the video or if you just like the amount of effort that I put into them, consider liking the video and maybe even subscribing to the channel. Only 5% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel, and that's kind of sad. So if you want to make me less sad while doing these challenges, consider subscribing to the channel. And yeah, I don't really know if there's anything else to say. Thanks for almost 15k subscribers. Yeah, let's get right into the video. Hold on. We can't start the video yet. I have something to say. I made a Discord. Go join it. Okay, now you can watch the video. The first boss battle of this challenge is going to be the root pack. I'd relate this boss battle to stealing candy from a baby, but you really never know. The baby could be booby trapped, or it might be a secret CIA agent. I really don't know. But there's one thing that I do know, and that this boss is really easy. I don't really have anything else to say. It's weird getting used to the cursed relic, because if I take stupid damage in the beginning phases, then I die. And that's not good. But. I spent most of the fight switching my weapons to get a good one, and then I'd lose it because I'd dash, and then I'd do that again, but we did beat it. If you're wondering how I'm beating these bosses on Expert for the first time, it's because I'm using a glitch. I really didn't want to have to go back and beat an entire game just to fight a couple bosses with the Cursed Relic. So I used a glitch, basically if you go into a save file that already has Expert mode, beat a boss on expert, and then come back to this save file, you'll have the difficulty unlocked. Now that I'm done absolutely game theorizing you, and don't ever do it, watch your calories. Don't you tell me how many calories I need, bitch! We're going on to the next boss, which is Goopy Legrand. That's right, I had you on the edge of your seat, the tip of your toes. You thought it was going to be the frogs, but it's not. It's Goop. You're welcome. It's a lot of the same from the first boss fight, I basically just ran around until I got good shots, because if you don't know, it's completely RNG based, so I could get the same two shots in a row for five times in a row. It changes every 0.45 seconds, I think. I'm not 100% sure, you can wiki that if you want. But like I said before, it's a lot of just waiting around because it's Goopy Legrand. If I ever die to Goopy Legrand, you have free reign to cancel me on Twitter and, I don't know, steal my kneecaps. I will stomp your kneecaps backwards! Because the boss is not that hard, it's a lot of waiting, but we finished it. Just go to the next one. One way to tell that I have the Cursed Relic enabled is if I constantly smell like Thanos' colon and have a purple stench around me, then that means I have the Cursed Relic equipped, or if I have any purple effect around me for that matter, then that means I am not cheating. I don't think I cheated, but if I did, you'll know. With that out of the way, we're on to everybody's favorite transforming flying woman on a unicycle, Hildeberg. Wiggly, boy. boy, if you don't get your squiggly diggly head Hildeberg is our first plane boss of this challenge, and the Cursed Relic works a bit different on planes because it only has two weapons it can switch from, the minigun and the bombs, so it just switches in between those. So it's actually not as bad, it's basically if I stop shooting then I switch weapons, so it's actually not terrible. 
The only problem came in her fourth, fifth, seventeenth phase, I don't know. It's when she becomes a man and starts shooting at me, because she also lets off stars that are homing, and whenever those homing stars hit you, you lose health, believe it or not, and I'm on one HP, so if I lose health, I die. So I die a lot on that phase, but once we got past it, I've practiced this final phase enough to know what I'm doing, and we beat it. We're on to the next boss, which I have absolutely nothing to say about. I have nothing to say about anybody who may or may not eat plants for a living. I have nothing to say about anything of the sort. Vegan. Why the fuck aren't you vegan yet? That's right, one of the final bosses of this aisle were versus in Plant Boy. My strategy for this fight was get the crack shot and then win. Because if you don't know, the crack shot is absolutely broken, especially in this boss fight. Because any plants he summons, I can immediately home onto and kill. So, basically, it's completely broken. And that's it. I literally just waited till I got the crack shot and won. Wiggly, diggly. I need a sidebar really quick. I know this has literally nothing to do with the video at all, but I found this clip while editing and I just had to show it because it's the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Right after the clip, we'll go back to the regular video, but I just needed to show this. What, do, what, what don't women understand about men? Cheeseburgers. Uh, okay. Anyways, from what you could tell before, reversing Ribby and Croaks. Sorry, sorry. Kermit and Pepe. Hi all, this is Kermit the Frog, and I'm here to tell you the story about Emmett Otter's... <laughs> I'm really sorry that you had to see that. Anyways, their first phase isn't terrible, neither is their second, because I'm able to keep the same shot pretty much the whole time, because I don't need to dash. The only problem come in their final phase because I'm doing a lot of dashing to avoid, especially if I get something like the tiger, because those require a lot of dashing, which changes my shot all the time, which leads me to get a bad shot, which means I'm not able to do any damage. Luckily, we were able to beat this boss really fast. We got the tigers, but it didn't matter because he was already dead. And just like that, Faster than you can recite the entirety of Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal official music video, we were done Inkwell Isle 1 and on to Inkwell Isle 2. Our first boss of Inkwell Isle 2 is going to be Candy Woman. The three mini bosses she sent out were the Jawbreaker, EDP, and the Candy Corn. For all three of these bosses, I decided to go with long range weapons such as the roundabout or the converge shot, but on some occasions I would take the crack shot. It all depended on what RNG I got, and I would go with the first one that came up. I kept the same strategy going into her final phase of just getting any long ranged weapon that I can so I can avoid taking damage, and it worked out. The next boss is gonna be the man, the myth, the legend. Will Smith. Keep my name out your fucking mouth! I'm going to, okay? <laughs> I could, oh, okay. No, I mean, it's, it's Jimmy. Just like Hildeberg, the changes to the boss fight aren't as severe with the cursed relic as they would be in a normal boss fight, but they still do kinda suck because I start the boss battle with 1 HP, but once I get past that, it's really easy. I have hair in my mouth. Ah. What the fuck? Once we get to the final phase, it's really just about not playing like trash. I save my super up, and we deal enough damage to kill him. With Jimmy the Great killed, we move on to the clown. No. 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 We're not doing that joke again. We're not. No. We're not. Beppy the clown. We are not doing that joke. I, it's not happening again. It's not. Look, I'm I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I it, like it was a, it was a joke. Like, come on. From now on, we only appreciate Sample on this channel. Go to his newest video. Tell him I sent you, and tell him how good he is at games. Because I actually kind of feel bad. <laughs> <laughs>
For the first part of Beppy's fight, I used long-ranged weapons. I wanted to use the converge shot if possible because that also hits him as well as hitting the ducks above him. During his second, third, and final phase, I wanted to use close-range weapons because I could get closer to him in those phases, especially the spread shot because during his second phase, I can hit the balloons with the spread shot. I also use the crack shot because it's aimbot, and there's nothing better than aimbot because I'm a console player. You know the rest. We get the spread shot, we absolutely annihilate a group of penguins with our super, and we win. After this fight, our cursed relic had turned into the divine relic, so we had to do our first rerun of the game. Our rerun included starting a new save file, doing the tutorial, doing the first level, doing the first mausoleum, going into the DLC, doing the Dream Devil boss fight, coming all the way back, beating Inqua Isle 1, and then beating the three bosses in Inqua Isle 2 to make it back to Wally Wonka's. We also had to go into another save file to beat a boss on Expert so we could come back and do the Expert glitch. And with all of that done, we can finally verse Wally Warbles with the Cursed Relic. And all of that work was done for me to say, it's an airplane level. I don't have anything else to say about it. The Cursed Relic after Phase 1 turns into the Blessed Relic because you have more than one hit available, and it literally just gives you a bunch of charms that you get to use. So, And you get to switch your bombs just by pressing one button. Usually you get to do that but now you don't have to switch to two buttons, it's literally just one button. So the only thing that does suck is if you take damage, then you switch your weapons, but just don't take damage. Once I came to that recollection, we were able to beat this boss. And after doing a speedrun frame skip shortcut, we were on to the final boss of Inkwile 2, Grim Matchstick. The plan for this boss fight was pretty simple. I would change my shot till I got the lobber, and once I got the lobber, I literally would not do anything to change it. Never use EX moves, never take damage, never dash, literally do nothing and keep the lobber for the entire fight. Even during his final phase, I didn't use my EX, I just sat there and shot the lobber until he died. And just like that, faster than you can recite the entirety of Spongebob Season 2 Episode 33A Shanghai, we were done Inqua Isle 2 and on to Inqua Isle 3. Our first fight of Inqua Isle 3 is going to be Rumor Honeybottoms. Believe it or not, for this boss fight I used the same strategy as the Grim Matchstick fight, also known as the Super Lobber strategy from down under Holy bloody mother of God, Jesus fucking my God. anyways if you need a refresher it's basically when i spam until i get the lobber and then i use the lobber for the entire fight that's it during her second phase i accidentally dashed and lost the lobber so i ended up just going with completely random shots until she entered her third phase and then i got the lobber again and stuck with it for the rest of the fight after that, we headed over to the pier to fight Captain Brinybeard. And we're never gonna eat. For this fight, I didn't have any shots that I wanted, so I just went with anything that dealt damage. I wanted the crack shot for the third and final phase because I knew I could home onto him and worry about dodging instead of hitting him. But other than that, I just went with any weapon that I actually got. The only problem came in his final phase because I accidentally dashed, which got rid of my shot. So I ended up going with the chaser for majority of the rest of the fight, because I used it for the randomizer, so I knew it worked decently well for this fight. And as sloppy as that plan may sound, it actually works. What's this guy's name? Quandale Pringle? Hey, Quandale Dingle here. I just escaped prison. I am staying at my friend Quandale Pringle's house. Anyways... We're versing Calamaria, she's probably one of the hardest plane bosses of this challenge, mainly because I start off with 1 HP, and if I get bad pairing with some minions that she sent out, then I am most likely going to take damage, which means I die, which means I have to restart the boss battle. So, 
That was a bit bad, but once I got past the first phase, everything else was fine, and we saved our super up for the final phase, and just won. After Calamaria, we were on to our final boss of the second run, which is going to be Sally Stage Play. What the fuck? Sally Stage Play. For this fight, I didn't have any. Sally Stage Play. For this fight, I didn't really have anything that I wanted in specific. Mainly, I just wanted to use the crack shot because it's the one I use most often, so I am used to it. I ended up getting my super really early and I used it in her second phase because I think that's her most difficult phase. During her third phase, I stuck underneath her and used that air up shot because it's basically the spread shot and I couldn't get the spread shot, so it was the second best thing. For her final phase, it was actually pretty difficult because I ended up using my super at the beginning but every single time I tried to make it over the umbrella, I would have to dash, just because I like doing that, because I feel like I'm not going to get hit then. But whenever I used my dash, I would change my shot. So after a bit of changing shots, we did finish it. It's the Divine Relic now, fuck. Like I said before the Sally fight, this will be our third rerun, because we have to beat the game all over again come back to Dr. Cal to do it with the Cursed Relic. Oh my God! And we're on to Dr. Cal. Dr. Cal's another plane boss, so he's not as hard as the other ones. Basically, I use the normal strategy of going after the laser first, then parrying to get EX moves to destroy the two middle parts, using my super during his second phase, and then just hoping that I don't get hit during his final phase. I use the minigun so much for the cup lock, and I practice this fight a lot. So I practically know the in and outs of this boss fight, so it wasn't terrible, and yeah, after a bit of luck, we finished it. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> we had to do it all! We had to. You already know we had to do it all! After Dr. Cal, we're gonna go down and verse... Beaner, 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 Beaner. Wiener, 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 I don't have much to say about his first phase, I mainly just used long-ranged weapons, obviously, so I didn't have to stay close to him. The only problem came in his second phase, because most of the time I wouldn't have enough parries to gain another HP, and if you don't know, pretty much every single thing in that second phase damages you. The bottle caps on the side that aren't moving, they damage you. Him, damages you. Flamethrower, damages you. The bottle caps that are moving, damages you. So you really just have to hope that you don't get hit there, or parry enough to get another HP. Once you're done with that phase, the third phase is actually pretty easy, especially if you have Super Arc Was that the bite of 87?! Know, kill one of the farthest ghosts and then just jump up and use the super and it just kills everything in its path. It's actually really broken. But yeah, we used the super, we dealt some damage with the spread shot, and we won. Will we be able to fight these last three? That's the real question, that's the real deal, that's the real meal. That's the, the, the dill pickle meal. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I think that's actually the Travis Scott meal, but I might be wrong. Anyways, this is a pretty standard cursed relic fight, it's not actually that difficult. The train's first phase is pretty annoying, but everything after that is perfectly fine, because I don't actually dash that much, especially during this, because I want to be able to stay as close to the platform as possible, so if I need to parry, I can. So once we got to the second phase, we used our super. Then we just used the crack shot for the third phase, and for the final phase, we wanted to use our super again and use any homing weapons because they're way easier to hit the train with, and plan worked out. For the final time in this challenge, and just like that, faster than you can play in one quarter of an Australian men's football league game, or if that doesn't tickle your fancy, faster than you can send a communication signal to Mars from Earth, 
we were able to beat Inkwell Isle 3, and we were on to Inkwell Hell. Our first fight of Inkwell Hell is obviously going to be King Dice. For these fights, I really didn't care which ones I got, so I went after anyone that had the extra hearts. Obviously, because I, since I start with one, I wanted as many hit points as I could get. So, since I could change my shot whenever I wanted to, it really didn't matter which bosses I got. So I ended up going with Mr. Wheezy, Fear Lap, and Mangosteen, since they were the three with the hearts on them. For Mr. Wheezy's boss fight, my shot would constantly change because I kept dashing to make it over the gap, but I just went with any long-ranged weapon I could get, or anything I could actually do damage with. Obviously, I can't do much damage with the spread shot, but other than that, I just went with any weapon that could actually deal damage to him. For Fear Lap, I used my super at the beginning of the fight, since I had it built up, and I wanted to do as much damage as possible, because I'm not really used to this boss fight. And I mainly just kept my distance with the minigun, and rinse and repeat. For Mangosteen, you already know, he's the easiest boss in the entirety of this game. So I just sat underneath him with the air up shot and just spammed that till I won. Now we were on to the actual King Dice boss fight. I used my super as soon as I could so I could build up other EX moves. And since I was dashing a lot to make it across the cards, my shot would change all the time, but I was always in King Dice's hitbox. And as well, since I had the Cursed Relic equipped, I also technically have the Heart Ring. So all the parries were also giving me extra HP. So this boss fight actually wasn't terrible. And with enough spamming, we finished it. After King Dice, we were on to the final boss of the main game, the Devil. I parry, bro! You heard me go... For the first part of this boss fight, I wanted to parry as much as possible so I could get my health back. As well as, the shots that I used didn't really matter because I was always underneath him, so I could hit him with pretty much any shot, and we finished the first phase pretty quickly. <laughs> For his second phase, funnily enough, I actually used the air up, even though it's actually garbage. Because I found that in this phase, it's actually not the worst thing in the world, because I can aim up and hit his balls, which are his hitbox, huh? and hit his eyeballs which are his hitbox almost every single time. I also wanted to parry the bombs as much as possible because then I can also get HP back that way. Once he entered his third phase, I actually got really lucky because I caught the converge shot, which if you don't know, it pierces through things, so it just goes straight through them while dealing damage. So I can hit him and the bats above him with one shot, so that's really useful. I also made sure to parry as much as possible. Once he entered into his final phase, we used our super art, and we won. When you thought the trilogy was over and done with, just like that, faster than you can do one interval of the Pomodoro technique, we were done with Inkwell Hell, and on to the DLC. Funnily enough, this is actually my second time playing the DLC. My second time. I beat it the first time for when it first came out, and never played it again, so this is going to be fun. Our first boss of the DLC is going to be the Howling Aces. I know it's not actually the first boss, but since I had to go over here to do the Dream Devil boss fight to get the Cursed Relic, I was right next to it, so I thought I might as well do it. And since I didn't mention this earlier, after the devil boss fight, I did have to do another rerun because it turned into the divine relic after that boss fight. So this is our fourth rerun. I'm not sure, but it doesn't matter at this point. The Howling Aces boss fight is actually pretty easy, especially if you follow the one rule. Crack shot. That's the one rule. At the beginning of the match, I would spam until I got the crack shot, and then I would literally use it for the rest of the fight. The first phase actually isn't difficult, especially with the crack shot. All I did was just dodge attacks and use the crack shot till he died. The second phase is pretty much the exact same thing. I would move in a circle and keep jumping over the letters till all four of them were done. 
once all four dogs are finished, we're on to the final phase, which is probably the most mind-boggling thing I've ever seen in my life. What is that? What the fuck is that? I don't know what's happening here. If you could please explain to me what's going on here, I'm not quite sure. This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. But yeah, after a lot of head tilting, we were actually able to finish this boss. Hey, hey Vsauce, Vsauce Michael, Michael here. here. Just found out that my mic was turned off for the entire playthrough. I'm... I... I am in pain. Anyways... Our next boss is going to be Glumstone the Giant. His first phase is pretty weird. I don't know how it works at all, so it's pretty hard. I mainly just used the crack shot for the entire fight and tried to parry as much as possible so I could get extra hearts for his second phase. The second phase is also equally as difficult because I don't know where the gnomes come from. I know they come from the ground, but they just seem to appear out of nowhere. I also don't know how to calculate where the fucking ball goes. And also, this man should not have hand puppets in the first place. If I had kids, I wouldn't let them anywhere near this guy. <coughs> Once we enter his mouth and conveniently enter into his third phase, we're going to want to use either the crack shot or the chaser, just because I don't have to worry about anything else. Luckily, I also had my super saved up. I don't know how, because I also used it in the second phase. But somehow I got my super back. I ended up using the air up to finish this fight. But we still did finish it. The next boss reversing is Esther. The molester. Hey yo, what the fuck? This boss is probably one of the hardest bosses of the challenge, mainly just because of her first phase. Her first phase is probably the worst first phase for this challenge because there's so much stuff on screen. And since I only have one HP, I can't get like the second parry that I need for the HP till her second phase. So I just have to, like, go GOAT mode for her first phase and hope that I don't get hit. During her second phase, it's pretty easy if you just go back and forth getting parries. I never ended up getting the parry in the second phase, so I had to parry one of the stakes during her third phase. The third phase is actually pretty difficult, especially if you don't have good special awareness, because I have to be looking at all the things on screen, mainly just the weird-ass sausage links that come out of the thing because I need to know which way they're aiming, so I know how to dodge them. But we gotta go back. Did you see that dodge? Oh my god, that was fucking amazing. Anyways, her fourth phase actually isn't terrible. It's pretty easy because I can get my HP back by parrying the peppers, as well as using my super art to do a lot of damage. And yeah, after we got past that first phase, we finished it. Our next boss is probably my favorite boss of the DLC and where this background music comes from, the Moonshine Mob. The first phase of this boss fight is pretty oh, annoying, shit. mainly just because the there's stop. a lot of stuff on screen, as well as the bombs that are all around the screen because you need to dash through them. I know you don't technically need to, but sometimes you can take stupid damage if you don't dash, and if I dash I lose my weapon, so I basically just stuck with the crack shot for this entire phase and dodged around so I didn't take any damage. During the second phase, I just used the crack shot as much as possible so I could dodge the sound waves, and I didn't have to worry about aiming. I did end up having to dodge once, but after that I got the chaser, so we were still homing on, so we still got it done. We actually got really lucky during the third phase because we got the chaser shot, and if you don't know, the chaser shot homes on to any of the bug balls he shoots out, so that was actually really lucky. I used my super in this phase to deal some extra damage, and after we did not fall for the fake knockout screen, we beat up the snail, and we won. The next boss of the challenge is going to be Mortimer Freeze. Unironically, this was probably the hardest boss in this entire challenge, or at least close to it. This boss was so annoying to do, mainly just because of his second phase. Although, during his first phase, I found a trick where if you have the crack shot, you can use the EX in match with the heart ring that's equipped in the Cursed Relic. And if you parry the EX, you actually get hearts back. So, that's pretty cool. But his first phase was mainly just me using the crack shot and dodging and waiting for parries, and that's pretty much it. 
Once he entered into his second phase, I actually have no idea how I even did this. I did such a good job dodging during this phase, and it was no doubt my best attempt so far. So I actually had no idea how I did this. I got the coffee charm and saved up my super for the final phase, but during this phase, I ended up getting one more HP based off parrying. And yeah, other than just lucky dodges, I don't know how I did this. Once he entered into his final phase, I had like zero practice, so I just shot as many bullets at him as I could. I somehow ended up getting two supers during this one phase, which was absolutely nuts, and we ended up killing him with the second super. After that, we head through the secret hatch and into the dungeon to fight the final boss of this challenge, Chef Salt Baker. What I said about the second phase for Mortimer Freeze was a lie. This is actually the hardest phase for this challenge. His first phase is legit just a bullet hell, and I'm only allowed one hit or else I die. So I needed to get a bunch of parries and just hope that I didn't take damage. Our saving grace for this phase was the chaser shot. The chaser shot, paired with the coffee charm which is in the cursed relic, is one of the best things ever, and I'm not even joking. It's so accurate with its homing, it's way better than the crack shot for this fight, in my opinion, or at least for this phase, because since you have the coffee charm, you're building up your super faster than you would, and that's really the only downside to using the chaser. Once he enters his second phase, we completely forget what we said about the chaser, because now it's garbage. Now we only use the crack shot because the crack shot does more damage, so we want to do as much damage to these things as possible because again, it's another bullet hell, and I don't want to take any damage. I made sure to parry to get some HP back, but mainly just use the crack shot. Now we enter what I would say is the worst phase of any boss in Cuphead. The hitboxes are absolutely horrendous, but we also forget what we said about the crack shot because now it's garbage. We only use the chaser in this household. Once he enters into his final phase, I spam to get the chaser, and I'll just let you watch. Oh my fucking god! That was so clean! Oh my god, Mr. Clean, make me bald. Whoa! So yeah, just like that, the main game and the DLC of Cuphead has been beaten on expert with the Cursed Relic. As always, if you guys like the video, please subscribe to the channel. This video took so long to make, both editing and recording, and I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far, Go ahead, comment bing bong to let me know if you made it to the end of the video. I don't have much else to say. I have a Discord. You can join it with the link in the description. I've made it so that the link doesn't expire, so you can join it whenever you want. And yeah, I really appreciate you watching the video. And you're going to want to subscribe because I have a few pretty cool collabs going on, including one with Barely Alec and one with Sample, so you're not going to want to miss those. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Pomodoro. 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 Okay. What is it? Pom 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 Pomodoro. 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 Or is it like this? Po. 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 Pomodoro. Pomodoro. Pa. Pa.